the American Civil War stands as a defining moment that reshaped a nation's destiny. As the echoes of the bloody battles faded, a new era dawned, and with it, a fascination for the relics that bore witness to those turbulent times. This is the story of Civil War treasures, the allure artifacts hold, the price collectors are willing to pay, and a scandal involving the general who led Pickett's charge at Gettysburg, which shook the auction world to its foundations. In the decades following the Civil War, an era of relic hunting swept across the United States. Enthusiasts, amateur historians, and even opportunists scoured battlefields and historic sites, unearthing artifacts that once adorned the uniforms and weapons of soldiers who had fought valiantly for their cause. It was a time of discovery, as these artifacts offered a tangible connection to the past. However, as interest grew, the sites that held these treasures were at risk of being irreparably damaged. To protect the nation's historical legacy, the National Park Service was established in 1916. With its creation, a watchful eye was turned on unregulated Civil War relic hunting, with federal regulations later enacted. However, it remains a constant battle preserving these hallowed grounds for generations to come. In 2015, too, Tennessee men were sentenced to 30 months in federal prison for illegally excavating and collecting artifacts from sites in Marion and Hardin counties in Tennessee and in Jackson County, Alabama. Among the countless relics discovered from the Civil War, a few have stood out not only for their historical significance, but also for their extraordinary auction values. In 2006, the battle flag flown by Confederate General Jeb Stuart, hand sewn by his wife Flora, was the standout lot of an auction in Texas, realizing $956,000 after spirited bidding. Previous to the auction, the flag had hung in Stuart Hall in Staunton, Virginia, and in the Richmond, Virginia Museum of the Confederacy. This was the first time it had ever been offered at public auction. Other personal items belonging to Stuart also brought strong final prices. When Ulysses S. Grant was made General in Chief of the United States Army in March 1864, the residents of Kentucky presented him with, in the words of the St. Louis Dispatch newspaper, the most beautiful and costly sword yet manufactured in this country. A fitting gift for the future president, the diamond-studded presentation sword was made by St. Louis silversmith Henry Folsom. Crafted from both silver and gold, 26 diamonds compose Grant's monogram, USG, with a large amethyst mounted above. The sword first set a world record for a Civil War presentation sword when it was sold by Grant's family in 1989. It went on to bring $1.6 million at heritage auctions in 2007 to become the most expensive piece of Civil War memorabilia ever sold at auction until that time. And in 2019, although not an original Civil War artifact, a statue erected in 1935 of Robert E. Lee in Dallas near the K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center sold at auction for more than $1.4 million. Interestingly, as part of the auction agreement, the buyer cannot put it in a place that is visible from public property. The North may have won the Civil War, but when it comes to Civil War artifacts and memorabilia, the Confederacy seems to hold a strategic lead in terms of market share desirability and scandal. In the late 1990s, a dark chapter emerged, a tale of deceit and manipulation that shocked the world of Civil War relic collectors. Enter Russ Pritchard and George Juno, two individuals who capitalized on their connections to orchestrate a notorious scandal. The pair had made a name for themselves on the PBS series, Antiques Roadshow, with their infamous appraisal, now known as the Watermelon Sword Incident. Pritchard and Juno valued a sword prearranged to be brought in by a friend at $35,000, and the friend Steve acted surprised about the news. Of course, Juno and Pritchard already knew the value as they had given Steve the sword, but they pulled this stunt in hopes of getting more airtime on Antiques Roadshow and to promote their business. These unscrupulous appraisers then targeted a descendant of Confederate commander George Pickett, George E. Pickett V, exploiting his trust and vulnerability. Pritchard and Juno deceived him into selling his ancestors' cherished artifacts, including an authentic sword wielded by General Pickett himself, for $88,000. They then turned around and sold the sword for $880,000. However, justice did prevail. Georgie Pickett V sued Juno and Pritchard in 1999, winning a $800,000 settlement from a jury. 
their ill-gotten gains were confiscated, and they faced imprisonment for their fraudulent actions. In exchange for testifying against his former business partner, George Juno received a six-month sentence, which he was allowed to serve in a work-release type of program. Russ Pritchard received a one-year sentence for his part in the military antiques fraud scheme, and he was also hit with an order to pay $830,000 in restitution to his victims. And before we continue, if you're enjoying our content, click that subscribe button and notification bell, and let us know in the comments what other history topics you'd like to hear about. Despite the scandal, the saga of Civil War relics is a testament to the resilience of historical artifacts and the unbreakable bonds that link them to our past. While some have sought to exploit these treasures for personal gain, the enduring spirit of preservation and the pursuit of justice prevailed. As we stand amidst many preserved Civil War battlefields today, we remember not only the sacrifice of those who fought, but also the invaluable remembrance preserved in the artifacts they left behind. What would you consider the most valuable Civil War treasure if it ever came up at auction? Let us know in the comments below and click that subscribe button and notification bell. You don't want to miss our next video.